Hi, it's Rose and um back for a bit of a scanner dandle today. Um firstly to Cyprus, um in the hands of uh Nora Najarian and Lidra Street, Lidra Street. <laughs> and secondly um to Ireland with Anne Enright and Actress. So starting with Lidra Street, um you'll know if you've watch my channel a bit um, that I have a kind of a long term slow but sure project going on to read a book from every country in the world if I can and so this was my book for Cyprus um, and it is absolutely the first book I've read by someone from Cyprus. Now I was attracted to it by the title Lydra Street um, because it kind of set off a, a, a memory in my mind um, and I realised that what it was, um, the word Lydra kind of jumped out at me, was because when I was about six or no seven, maybe eight, um, I went to visit Cyprus with my parents, obviously, and we stayed in a hotel called the Lydra Palace Hotel, um, So, which is why the, the book jumped out at me. And I will come back, I hope, to the Lydra Palace Hotel later on. I was also, when I looked sort of looked, looked into the book, having seen the title, interested to read this because um, it's a book of short stories um, by um, a, an author who's also a poet who lives in the Greek part of Cyprus um, and says that one of the things that she um, is sort of bringing to her short stories is um, that experience of, of, of living in a divided country. Um, I don't know if you if you know all about the history of Cyprus let you skip the next minute okay but if you don't um, Cyprus is a beautiful island in the eastern Mediterranean um, that um, kind of it's early history I suppose was very much embedded in the classical Greek world and it's the mythical home um, of the birthplace of Aphrodite goddess of love and beauty okay um, but it's kind of was strategically important um, in times gone by because of where it was and so it changed hands multiple times over the last kind of couple of thousand years um, had the Venetians were there the Knights Templar were there the French were there um, then it had several hundred years in the hands of the Ottoman Empire um, and then as the Ottoman Empire started to kind of go to pot the British moved in as we had a bit of a tendency to I'm afraid and effectively took it over Understandably, 20th century Cypriots were looking for independence, um, uh, which they eventually got um, in, I think, nine, maybe 1960. Um, but uh, there was a long standing um, tension between the fact that the island had both a Greek population and a Turkish population, although um, the sort of independent Turkey was meant to encompass. All those people. Um, it didn't always feel like that, particularly I think to the Turkish population. Long and short of it is, is in 1974 there was a coup d'etat um, that was about trying to kind of increase the, the, the extent to which the island was under the Greek sphere of influence um, and that prompted an invasion by um, from the Turkish mainland um, to uh, defend the interests or of the Turkish population or try and hang on to or take the island back for Turkey. Essentially, since 1974, the island has been split in two and um, the uh, United Nations kind of maintain a, a green zone, a no man's land between um, Greek Cyprus and Turkish Cyprus and, and um, who both maintain... Um, uh, exists a separate existence and the city of Nicosia um, is actually divided between the two um, in the same way that say Berlin used to be divided in, 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 in two and um, here's your curiosity because the, the Lydra Palace Hotel where I stayed all those years ago um, before 1974 which um, um, yeah that happened a few years after I was there um, that hotel still stands but it's now in the middle of no man's land and is used by the UN peacekeeping forces um, to live. 
um, some of them are stationed there. So uh, that was a, a strange thing. Anyway, I was really interested to read um, this book because I know she um, seeks to kind of not be too partisan in her, her kind of thinking and writing, but is very interested in the, um, the fact that she lives in a divided country and a divided city. Um, also, she, she has, there's an added twist in that, um, you may have guessed from her name, she's of Armenian background and her um, grandparents actually fled from what was the new country of, of nation state of Turkey um, to Cyprus at the time when um, Armenians were being effectively driven out of Turkey. So she's got another layer there of kind of displacement or, or, or disconnection. What did I think of the book? Um, I think it's possible she may be a better poet than she is a short story writer, which doesn't mean to say that there aren't some really good stories in this book. Um, I, there's something about a, a collection of short stories that you always end up with some that you really like and some that you're not so keen on. Um, and I have to be honest here and say I'm not a great short story reader. It's not my sort of favourite format genre. Um, Having said that, some of these were excellent. Um, I, one I particularly liked was um, one called Guided Tour, and it's about a uh, one of those tour guides that it has parties of tourists and takes them for a walk and explains the history of their um, what they're seeing and so on. And um, it, it, you've got like what's going on in the head of the tour guide as um, they're doing these. Um, these explanations and it's like they have you have to um if you're that tour guide you have to tidy up the history you have to make it package it neatly and make it appealing don't you um and that is a really strange thing to be doing in a place that can't be neatly packaged because it's still fraught with um uh difficulty and um difference um and um yeah, the, the um, one of the tourists is, tourists is thinking, um, of course, of course, history, when it becomes history, when it can be read in history books, when it can be talked about by tourist guides, makes perfect sense. So that was him sort of trying to understand what the guide was saying. Then um, I'll give you another little bit. The tourists look and listen like good pupils who will score highly in the history test. They will revise all the important dates, memorise them and even remember them for a while. And then, inevitably, one day soon, under a cold grey sky, all those warm holiday feelings will be gone. The dates will fly away and there will be snapshots of the cheap midwinter packaged beaches at Iron Napa to look at and admire. The blue sea, the blue sky, the I love Cyprus t-shirts and the almost tan. And yeah, that really sums it up, doesn't it? That, you know, they may, you're there and you're interested and you're trying to pay attention, you're trying to understand and, and you, you memorise the dates and it all seems so important and then you go away and it all fades and what you remember is is, is the beach or the sunshine. Now, um, that's not entirely true all the time, but it, it that's almost like the hypocrisy of, of, of tourism, isn't it? Especially when you go to somewhere that's... Um, not all sunshine and roses. So some really goodies in this book, some that really are, are political with a small p and really interesting in thinking about those sort of um, uh, the issues of living in a divided city. There's one specifically called No Man's Land, um, for example. Um, others that are more about um, people, relationships, marriage, love, lovely one about uh, an old man called a man of principle um, that I thought was beautiful. Um, there's also some short stories in here and I'm going to kind of pose a little question about this I think. So there's some short stories in here that you might call, if you look at these, uh, I think you might call them m micro stories almost, you know they're only um, some of them like only just a few lines long. Now I can see why that would be a really useful exercise to do in like a kind of a creative writing class or something, you know, write a story in, in, in X number, number of words, you know, 300 words, 500 words, whatever. Um, but they really don't do it for me um, as a reading experience, which is interesting because that kind of succinctness in a poem, I might really like and appreciate. So it could be um, 
it's just it's just me um so i'd be interested to know um of what you think about that sort of micro micro short story um writing i i, I think that uh, one of the problems with short stories for me is that if they're if it's a good story then i want to kind of i want the novel and if it's if it's not then i just feel sort of a bit like well, so what? Um, having said that, this was an interesting book, and if she ever got around to writing a novel, I would definitely read it. My other Scully Dandel was to Ireland, um, and it is um, the March is the Irish Readathon month, so it was nice to, to read an Irish writer. And the book that I read, which I can't show you because um, I actually listened to it on audiobook, um, was Actress by Anne Enright. Now, it's probably a little unfair to have read these two books so very close together because Actress by Anne Enright is um, the work of a mature novelist at the height of her powers. Um, there's just, you know, it's just in a different class. Now, Actress was one of those books that as you're reading it, you're thinking, well, I think of this, this is odd. Oh, gosh, it's, very, it's a bit of a mishmash. It's kind of all over the place. And then when you finish it and you look back on it and you give it a few hours or a couple of days to kind of settle in your brain, you realise, my goodness, that was an incredibly clever book and an incredibly well put together book and um, quite inspired book, I think. I'll try to explain why. So, Actress is... Um, it, Actress all takes place in the head of the narrator. Okay, it is a stream of consciousness book. Um, but, and here's the twist, I suppose, the narrator is herself a writer. She writes novels. So you, you, you know that although it's stream of consciousness, she's also almost writing a potential book in her head as, as she does that stream of consciousness. All the way through, she frequently addresses, um, addresses it to you. Um, and a lot of the time that you is you think, um, her husband of many years, um, uh, and as if she's sort of explaining things to him or telling him things. But this you is actually a very slippery fish because it isn't always him. Sometimes it seems like it might be you, the reader. Sometimes it's one of the other characters in her past life. Sometimes you think it's actually her talking to her younger self and sometimes to her mother, because this is really the story of her mother. Um, so she is fictionally the daughter of a fictional um, Irish film star and um, Catherine O'Dell and she kind of what she's doing in this book is um, planning or imagining writing her mother's biography and so sometimes and this is where you get all the kind of weird and um, but it's ultimately satisfying changes in style because sometimes in her head it's as if she's planning a chapter of this biography and she'll go into kind of formal biography kind of um, mode uh, you know like oh Catherine's grandfather was born in 18 whatever and he was you know and 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 uh, sort of all sort of factual then she'll go off into um, a memory of her herself as a small child watching her mother perhaps um, from the um, oh, what do you call it the side like the side of, a th of, of the stage or the theatre where you, you look across and you can see the person in the bright lights but um, and the audience beyond them sometimes she goes off into kind of like um uh, glitzy, ho gossipy Hollywood anecdotes um, about when her, her mother was there. Um, sometimes we're um, sometimes we're in kind of like rural Ireland and um, uh, kind of these rather cutesy sort of stories of the, these travelling players. That was. Um, Catherine's parents um, uh, taking Shakespeare to the to the Irish. Um, farm worker or, or whatever in, 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 in parish halls around around the country. Um, and then you get a scene that is really powerfully um, distressing, like um, uh, uh, her experience of a very, uh, a kind of um, 
abusive sexual encounter when she was a young woman um, and the aftermath of that or uh, the scenes when she's um, nursing her her mother in her, her dying days. Um, so there's these wild changes in tone. And I know that some people, when they're reading this book, will sort of be irritated by that. And I can, just, I can envisage the reviews that said, oh, this author couldn't make up her mind what kind of story she was telling. And, oh, it veered back. But actually, that that's the beauty of it, because it is all in Nora's... Um, that's the the protagonist the 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 daughter the author it's all it's all in Nora's head and we get all of her mother's life and all of her life um in deep emotional detail um through this kind of agglomeration of stories and reminiscences and thoughts um that happen um in an un, unchronological order and with all these changes in style. I don't know if I really kind of explained that properly and why I think it is so very, very good. If you've read Actress, do comment and, and, and see if you can kind of like explain it better than I have. But I, I genuinely thought, oh, it, oh, it was it was a, a brilliant work. I was the only... The only bad thing about the reading experience of it for me was that I was listening to it on audiobook. Now the good bit about listening to it on audiobook is read by Anne Enright herself and she's uh, unlike some authors, she reads her own work really well. She also has a really nice voice and um, one of those um, uh, kind of Irish accented voices that you could just listen to for hours. So that was lovely but it's the kind of book where you need sometimes to stop and flick back and think, oh where are we here? Are we, are we in the 19... 40s or in the 1960s uh, who's yeah, yeah or that person she just mentioned we came across them before well because it's an audiobook you couldn't I couldn't do that so that was um uh, I would um that was the one disadvantage of my reading experience and I think it's it 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 probably um made it a little bit harder for me but notwithstanding that I still thought that it was a first rate book um and um I hope more of you will read it. It's only very newly out. Um, it's a 2020 book. Okay, bye.